Welcome to Physics Next Book. Today we shall discuss the mathematical form of the Lagrangian. You may have noticed that in the last two three videos, our focus has shifted from the usual relativity stuff to classical mechanics. The underlying agenda is to study the dynamics of a relativistic particle which moves nearly at the speed of light. For example, a proton accelerated in the Large Hadron Collider. And for that, we need elementary concepts of Newtonian and Lagrangian mechanics. So we did a video explaining the concept of an action functional and the least action principle in context of particle mechanics. Then another one where we wrote the action as a time integral of the Lagrangian and using the least action principle derived the Lagrange's equation. The Lagrange's equation works like a machine that takes the Lagrangian of any mechanical system as input and churns out its equation of motion. The algorithm leading from the action principle to the Lagrange's equation is so generic in nature and conceptually so fundamental that it applies to both relativistic and non-relativistic mechanical systems and with certain generalizations can even be used for classical field theories like electromagnetism, gravity, etc. All we need is to figure out the form of the Lagrangian for a given system. So in today's video, we shall discuss how one can do that, taking a particle moving slowly under a conservative force as an example. By the way, moving slowly is a colloquial way of saying non-relativistic. And conservative force means the force depends only on the position coordinates of the particle. With that understood, let us first talk about the momentum of this particle. We discussed it at length in our last video, link is in the icons, but to give you a brief overview, in there we demonstrated that under the condition of zero applied force, Newton's second law ensures that momentum p given by mass times velocity of a particle stays conserved in time. Then we explained that in case of conservative forces, zero applied force is a consequence of the homogeneity of space a symmetry which dictates that the Lagrangian of a system under zero applied force should obey the condition del L del x is equal to zero. This mathematical condition for zero applied force and hence momentum conservation when used in the Lagrange's equation shows that ddt of del L del x dot is zero, meaning del L del x dot is the conserved quantity. So it must be the definition of momentum in terms of the Lagrangian. Since this definition comes from the symmetry of spatial homogeneity and the general form of the Lagrange's equation, it applies to both relativistic and non-relativistic scenarios. On the other hand, the momentum defined as mass times velocity came from Newton's second law, which we have always used for low velocity or non-relativistic particles. So the natural question to ask is, what should be the form of the Lagrangian L of a non-relativistic particle? so that the general definition of momentum that is del del x dot can produce p equals m times v. It's obvious what we need to do, right? Since x dot and v are the same variable, we rewrite del l del x dot as del l del v and get the v dependence of the Lagrangian as integral of mv dotted with dv. So we see that the velocity dependence of the Lagrangian for a non-relativistic particle is through its kinetic energy. We have already covered kinetic energy in an earlier video, the link is in the i button as always. So if there is no conservative force acting on the particle, space appears homogeneous to it, so its Lagrangian cannot depend on any of the spatial coordinates and only depends on the velocity through the kinetic energy. Since there is no force acting, this is called a free particle Lagrangian. But what if there is a force acting on the particle, a conservative one? That means no spatial homogeneity. So the Lagrangian does depend on the spatial coordinates this time. In the last video, we have shown that a conservative force is always the negative gradient of some scalar function. This function is called the potential energy of the particle. Then again, Newton's second law says force is nothing but dp dt, that is time derivative of the momentum vector. And we know p is del L del x dot. That makes the right hand side ddt of del L del x dot. But because of the Lagrange's equation, 
we can write ddt of del l del x dot as del l del x. If you are a little worried about taking all these derivatives with respect to vectors, that's no big deal. It's just a handy way of writing derivatives by all the components in one shot. So del l del x vector is nothing but the gradient of the Lagrangian. So a conservative force is given by the gradient of the particle's Lagrangian and also by the negative gradient of its potential. Need I say more? Obviously, the coordinate dependence of the Lagrangian of a non-relativistic particle under a conservative force is through the negative of its potential energy. So the full form of the Lagrangian of this particle is basically its kinetic energy which brings in the dependence on the velocity and should always be there in any slowly moving that is non-relativistic mechanical system irrespective of whether there is a force acting or not minus its potential energy which gives the position dependence and is present if and only if there is a non-zero conservative force acting. Okay, but can the Lagrangian depend on time? Of course, since the velocity and position of the particle have implicit time dependence, so does the Lagrangian. But can it have an explicit time dependence, not through the position and velocity variables, but t on its own? To answer this, again we have to refer to our last video. There we saw that when a non-relativistic particle is under a conservative force, the sum total of its kinetic energy and potential energy is a conserved quantity that we call its mechanical energy. In fact, the force is called conservative because the mechanical energy is conserved. But we know that conservative force means dependence on the space coordinates only. So the Lagrangian of the particle also depends on the space coordinates exclusively, but cannot have any explicit time dependence. In general, we can say that any conservative system with conserved mechanical energy needs to have a symmetry called the homogeneity of time, which ensures that the Lagrangian of such a system cannot have explicit time dependence. So that answers our question about the explicit time dependence of a Lagrangian of a conservative system. Now, to be honest, there are mechanical systems where the Lagrangian has explicit time dependence. So no homogeneity of time and no conservation of mechanical energy. But in such cases, the force involved will be time dependent, therefore non-conservative. Such systems are called open systems. But that's a story for some other time. Today, we have looked at what we call a closed system, a non-relativistic particle of mass m and velocity v equals x dot vector being acted upon by a conservative force which is determined by the negative gradient of its potential energy. Its Lagrangian turns out to be the difference between its kinetic and potential energy, whereas its conserved energy is their sum total. This tells us certain things about the Lagrangian of any system in general, that it has to have the dimension of energy. It should only depend on the position and velocity variables, if the system is a closed one. And most importantly, the symmetries that the system has go a long way in fixing the form of the Lagrangian. We have already talked about the homogeneity of space, which means no conservative force. So the momentum is conserved and it's a free particle Lagrangian given by the kinetic energy term only. Then if there is a conservative force acting, that means no homogeneity of space, so no conservation of momentum, but there is homogeneity of time and consequently energy conservation related to the symmetry. In this case, there is no explicit time dependence in the Lagrangian. But there is yet another symmetry called the isotropy of space that we can see in this Lagrangian. Note that the particle's velocity vector has to have a direction, right? Because the particle is going in one direction or another. But the Lagrangian or the system does not care about which direction it is. Because only the magnitude of the velocity v mod square, that is v dotted with itself, comes into the Lagrangian. This means we can rotate the system and it won't matter. The Lagrangian of the system, its energy, etc. remain the same. This is the symmetry of isotropy of space. Of course, there is a conserved quantity related to this symmetry as well. We call it the angular momentum, but we shall talk about it some other time. What I am trying to impress upon you is, symmetries of a Lagrangian are extremely important in fixing its form. In fact, in our next video, we shall see how the Lorentz symmetry, together with the homogeneity of space and time, 
and isotropy of space helps us guess the Lagrangian of a relativistic free particle. So keep yourself tuned in. Hope you have found this video useful. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.